Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been another long while, but um, I am back. I am feeling good and my hair is growing even more. I have now had about, I think three haircuts since finishing chemo. So my hair has been growing pretty well. I have now had three Lupron shots. As a matter of fact, I just had my third Lupron shot uh, yesterday. Is it yesterday? Day before yesterday. So I am definitely feeling some of those side effects a little bit more heavier. When I was just doing tamoxifen, I felt like the symptoms, or not symptoms, but the side effects were pretty manageable. I didn't have anything too severe. But with Lupron, I have noticed that the hot flashes, not even the hot flashes, but just the inability to like regulate my body temperature is just off the charts. I go from being freezing cold one minute to being extremely hot the next. And then it's just like this vicious cycle of like being super cold, being super hot, and then just not being able to be comfortable. So right now I am wearing the sweater, but underneath I am wearing a um, like a dress <sighs> because like I said, the the body temperature just goes from extreme to extreme and I can no longer just count on wearing these comfy sweaters because before cancer, before chemo, this was literally my uniform. Crew neck, mock neck, turtlenecks. I just love wearing big oversized sweaters. That is my style. Those are my style staples. So it has been really, really sad to say goodbye to a lot of those sweaters because I just can't wear them anymore. I just, it's just too hot. Yeah, sad, but like I always say, I'm alive and it could be worse. Life has been pretty busy and chaotic. Uh, I've been working quite a bit and not only am I working my regular like, you know, eight to five Monday through Friday job, but I also have some side businesses where I do social media management and stuff like that. So yeah, I find it hard to sit and record a video. So as I'm getting ready to head out the door and go to a baby shower, I thought that I would just hop on here and chat with you guys and catch you all up on what's going on. It has been, and I haven't really talked about it on here, but it has been, a, I think, about a year since I had my egg retrieval surgery. So prior to starting chemotherapy, I was given the opportunity to go through the egg retrieval process. I said yes to it. I went through like some of the IVF journey, doing the injections and then being on a bunch of medication and then having eggs retrieved. I was able to get three eggs retrieved and they are sitting frozen at a fertility clinic. And my insurance covers the first full year of storing them but it is up to me to pay for the X amount of years that I want to continue to keep them stored and frozen. So I called this week and I just asked them, you know, what, how much is it to continue to keep them frozen because I cannot get pregnant right now. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But um, yeah, they said it's $800 for a one year storage thing. So yeah, I'm going to have to pay $800 in the next few days to keep my three little eggs frozen until further notice. So like I just mentioned a few moments ago, I cannot get pregnant right now. Um, I had a cancer that thrived off of my estrogen, off of my hormones. So right now the Lupron and the Tamoxifen are both working together to keep those hormone levels and my estrogen suppressed which is why i have gone into you know i guess it's called like medicated menopause medical menopause i don't know what the term is but basically i have menopause and my ovaries are like shut the door is closed um because yeah we just want to make sure that 
between now and the next three to five years, I continue to take these medications to hopefully keep the cancer away. So I, the first oncologist I talked to was very um, old school and very blunt. And I don't feel like he was the most up to date to give me information regarding what my fertility options were prior to starting my chemotherapy. And when I asked him what does family planning look like for me, he had told me that he does not recommend me um, ever getting pregnant. And yeah, that was really disheartening to hear. And thankfully, my husband, you know, really just pushed and advocated for me to see another oncologist so that we can just get a second opinion. And we did do that. And thankfully, my second oncologist is just a ray of sunshine. She was amazing. She gave me options. I mean, she allowed me to be able to preserve those three eggs that I now have frozen. So yeah, she says that starting a family is not out of the picture for me, but she would like me to continue to, to take my tamoxifen and my Lupron shots for three years, at least three years. And then we can kind of revisit the topic of me carrying my own child. But um, yeah, you know, I the option is there. However, if I do decide to do that, I have to go into that knowing that the possibility of me getting a reoccurrence of the breast cancer is high because again, my body would be producing all those hormones, all of that extra estrogen, which is the environment that my cancer um, was thriving off of or thriving in. So me and my husband, we've had many conversations. We've gone back and forth and back and forth again. And um, right now we are just gonna continue to keep my eggs frozen and stored away until, you know, either in the next three to five years, I decide that I would like to carry my own child or, you know, surrogacy is an option. I would love to do surrogacy to have, <laughs> whoops. I would love to have a surrogate, but the cost of getting a surrogate is extremely expensive. And I mean, we, we can't afford that. So there are, are like grants and other opportunities available here locally that I am going to apply for. And hopefully, hopefully we get selected and receive that financial help to be able to pay for a surrogate because I would love and just seeing him and I in a little baby form to just have that would be absolutely incredible but if it doesn't happen I've made peace with it as much peace as one can make with that and of course we 1000% want to do um, adoption well, foster care and then adoption. That is something that we have always wanted, even prior to my diagnosis, prior to me being on this medication, prior to us knowing that having a, a you know, me carrying a child was not going to be a possibility. We, we just knew that we always would want to um, adopt a child later on in the future as a married couple. So, that is 100% in the picture, Lord willing. Of course, again, adoption is expensive and there's a lot of steps involved into it, but there are also many local grants available that help out with some of those costs. Hopefully in the next couple of years, we can get the ball rolling on all of that because I would, I would love for us to be parents, I would love for us to be able to give a healthy home to to a child who needs it. Yeah, that's just something that's on my heart that I really, really hope it can come to fruition. Something else that I want to talk about is the um, fear of having a reoccurrence. So every month I try try 
to give myself a self-exam around my breasts. Now, I got all of my breasts removed and I have implants at the moment. I did have a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. Um, but just because I got all my breast fat slash tissue removed, that doesn't mean that the possibility of me having a reoccurrence is like 100% gone. So it's still really important to be checking myself very constantly. Now, I it's hard. I will say that I have to mentally prepare myself a lot right before I give myself my own like breast exams because it's just as scary. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm I'm afraid that one of these days I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna feel that lump again so it's something that is very mentally challenging when that time of the month comes that I have to check myself and um, I have to just have that internal conversation with myself and remind myself that it's better to know and be proactive about it than to just be naive and to not check myself and there be something and me let it go on for months and then find you know finally the symptoms are too severe that it's too late so it is scary when i have to check myself but still important to do it to give yourself those self exams well that was a lot that i just uh covered i think for the most part i'm going to switch topics now and i'm going to talk about like mental health after your after someone is done with like cancer treatment um it's it's kind of a wild ride right you go from discovering you're sick going into treatment being in the doctor's office non-stop and going through all these treatments finishing and then you're done for me i finished and then i went into my second surgery where which was my bilateral mastectomy and i had some time to recover at home not have to worry about work so i feel like that did kind of help me to just bridge that cap that gap between finishing treatment and jumping back into regular life but i i feel like i also haven't allowed myself to i don't even know how to explain it to like feel everything because i've been so distracted i've been so busy and i just jumped right back into work and right back into my day-to-day -day life from one moment to the next and I catch myself now having just random moments. And it's not every day, but it's like a few times a week where I will be driving or I'll be just sitting at home. And then all of a sudden I get like a flashback of some of the stuff that happened. And it just brings me really, really down. Sometimes I also get super emotional just thinking about everything that did happen. And honestly, I am very grateful for how things have turned out because I am healthy now and I, you know, feel like I have this second chance at life. But there are times where I do get emotional and I, get, I do get sad about everything that happened. And um, yeah, so it's just weird little moments throughout the week where I feel those um, emotions and I get those flashbacks. But all in all, I honestly feel like my experience and my journey was a lot more positive than I could have ever imagined. I just truly felt all of the prayers that we were receiving. We were so incredi incredibly blessed to receive so much financial help that I just, I was more in awe of how our community came together 
more than anything. So I always, I always want to bring it back to, to the positive. Yes, of course, it, it still was really difficult to go through everything that I have gone through. And there is still a lot of healing to do, but I never, ever, ever want to take away like the spotlight from, from God and from everything that he did and everything he pulled me through because that was honestly the only thing that got me through everything was prayer, scripture, and just having so many people in our church and our community just come together to support us. In a nutshell, that is kind of just a recap of where I currently am mentally and emotionally. I feel like I am in a pretty good place. All right. Well, that is it for today's video. I just wanted to take some time out of my day to just catch up with you all and kind of let you into my thoughts and feelings. I want to do a video talking about wigs because I know some of you may be barely going through your cancer journey, your chemotherapy, maybe you're starting to lose hair, maybe you've lost your hair already. Um, so I want to talk all things hair. Stay tuned for the next video. If you have any video suggestions, anything you want to know, if you want me to go more in depth in my IVF slash egg retrieval slash egg freezing journey, do let me know in the comments below and I hope that you all have a happy and blessed day. Bye!